What's up? Uh, thanks for joining me today. It's been a minute. In the previous video I uploaded, I talked about getting started in Leathercraft and what tools you would need to start. Today's video, I thought I would talk about choosing the right leather for your project and how to go about that. Starting Leathercraft can be very, very frustrating because you have no idea what leathers to use or what kinds of leathers there are or even how thick to buy your leather. So today I hope to answer those questions for you. Stick around. Okay, so the first thing you want to find out is what kind of quality leather you're dealing with here. There are many people who will sell you leather that will say it's real leather or genuine leather, but the quality of that leather varies immensely. What you are looking for is called full grain leather, and that is the top cut of a hide. Within that hide, there are four different categories or qualities of leather. The best quality leather is called full grain leather. Then there's something that's called top grain, which is a slice below full grain. And then there's something called genuine or suede. And then below that, which is not even really part of the leather itself, it's all the scraps that come together and they glue it together and that's called bonded leather. Stay away from that one because that leather tends to peel and rip and, and fray and it's really just a terrible leather to use. A lot of lower end manufacturers will use bonded leather. Think of it as sawdust and when they make MDF, it's all that compacted sawdust glued together, compacted really hard to make a board. Sawdust compacted together, sawdust comes from wood, but is not the strongest and best quality wood you can get. So like I said, look for full grain leather. A lot of the suppliers that I will link in the description all carry full grain leather. Now we're gonna get into something called tannage type. And for the most part, there are two main methods of tanning a leather hide. The two are called chrome tanned, or chromium tanned leather and veg tanned leather or vegetable tanned leather. Both tannages, vegetable and chrome, use the same hide, but the method of tanning is very different. Chrome tan leathers use a chemical called chromium as their agent to tan the hide. And this can take only a day, as opposed to vegetable tan, which takes 30 days to sit in a vat of natural tannins like birch bark or different natural organic ingredients. So the prices between the two leathers are quite substantial. The physical difference between these two leathers is that the veg tan leather has a stronger or a firmer temper to it and it doesn't stretch. Chrome tan leather is a more medium temper leather and it tends to stretch when you pull on it. If you think about it, if you were making a belt, you wouldn't want that leather to stretch. You want it to keep its shape so it will hold your pants up at the same size all the time. Just a quick example, this is a chrome tan leather and it's got a nice pull up. So when I pull up on the back of it, the oils and waxes shift around creating a lighter spot where I've pulled up on. Or when you bend it or fold it or crease it, you can see that it makes a nice beautiful pull up. And that's what I like using chrome tanned leathers for. They tend to be more versatile when I'm making projects. A true vegetable tan leather tends not to have as much of a pull up as a chrome tan leather that's been waxed and oiled. This leather bag is made out of 100% vegetable tan leather. And I like it because it keeps its shape really nicely and it's a firmer temper. Also, leather like this patinas very, very beautifully. And it just looks cool. It gathers a lot of character really fast and it's a very high quality, long lasting leather. Again, when you're first starting out, I would be careful as to how much money you put into leather because you can spend a lot of money really fast. I would go with a lower end chrome tan leather just to kind of cut into it and see what leather is all about. So within the tanning processes, you don't have to just stick with bovine or cow leather. There are different animals you can buy leather from, ranging from ostrich, alligator, horse, salmon. There are tons and tons of skins. Anything that has a skin can be leather and they can be tanned in different processes. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. So let's talk about choosing the right leather for your project. For things like tote bags, I suggest using a thinner chrome tan leather. The temper on a chrome tan leather is much softer than something like a vegetable tan leather. And when you start turning inside out the bag, 
you'll know what I mean. If you ever tried turning a vegetable tan leather bag, it is a struggle. Sometimes even with chrome tan, it's a struggle. For things like belts, you're going to want to use a vegetable tan leather. Vegetable tan leather does not stretch and it keeps your belt in the same form and size for a very long time. And that's what you want in a belt or a strap or harnesses or whatever you're gonna be using that is gonna have a lot of force on it. Vegetable tan leather is the way to go. For wallets, I suggest using both. It really doesn't matter for things like wallets or journals or any smaller item that you're gonna have as a everyday carry that you're gonna put in your bag. It really comes down to cost and your preference. If you're first getting into leather craft, the main factor between choosing a vegetable tan leather and a chrome tan leather will most likely come down to the price. Both leathers are great to work with. Some just have some characteristics that the other one doesn't. Before we continue, I wanna give a massive shout out to this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that cover dozens of entrepreneurial and creative skills. When I first started Leathercraft, I had no idea where to turn to. I would scour the internet for videos, content, blogs, you name it, to find out how to do this trade. And I wish there was something that I could go to that I could have everything in one place and learn from someone who was an industry leading teacher. With Skillshare, you have exactly that. One class that I found particularly interesting was customizing type with Traplin. The way that he delivered the content was very interesting and engaging and left me wanting to watch more. The lettering and graphic design lessons he taught will definitely help me integrate more of that into my business. The great thing about Skillshare is that you can learn from your own home. I know for me, going to school and setting up a time where I have to leave my business or leave my home and go somewhere to learn can be very, very constricting and restrictive for my lifestyle. A premium membership grants access to unlimited resources. And for only $10 a month, that's a no-brainer. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they are giving you a two-month free trial. So you can try it out, test it out, see what it's all about. The link is in the description below and you can sign up there and get those two months of free trials started. So whether you wanna learn photography, videography, culinary, craft, business practices, entrepreneurial skills, you name it, Skillshare is the place to be. Now let's continue. One of the most asked questions I get on my videos and Instagram posts is what thickness of leather do I use for that project? And it's taken quite a while for me to narrow down what thickness I use. If I'm making a wallet, I tend to use three to four ounce leather. If I use anything thicker than that, the wallet tends to get bulky really fast. Depending on how many pockets I have stacked on each other, it can get really chunky. For journals and iPad cases and other things of that nature where you're not necessarily stacking a lot of things on top of each other, I will use a thicker leather. So something like a four to five or a five to six even, depending on your project. So for tote bags, I tend to use also three to four ounce, depending on what style I'm doing. If I'm doing a more of a rugged, heavier duty style tote bag, I will use probably a four to five but that's pretty much max because once you start turning inside out a tote bag, it can get really hard to turn thicker leather inside out. So anywhere from three to four or four to five, I use for my tote bags. For a satchel, I would use a six to seven ounce chrome tan or veg tan leather. I like to use a thicker leather in that case because it's more of a briefcase style satchel that I make. And also when I'm doubling up pieces for straps, it makes those handles or straps nice and thick uh, to ensure that you have a long lasting strap and a high quality strap. The thicknesses I'm talking about are just general thicknesses, what I think would be good for you if you're starting out. Belts, I would say eight to 10 or 10 to 12. I use 10 to 12 because I like a really thick belt uh, that will last a lifetime. As you can see, there are many different thicknesses of leather that you can buy. And most tanneries will dry split the leather to the desired thickness that you like. The whole side will come in that thickness. There are also stores that will cut you leather by the foot, one by two feet or one by one panels. So you can try out the leather before you decide to buy the whole side, which is a great option. You'll save money and they generally give you really good cuts of that leather. Wow guys, that was a lot of information for today and I hope it's kind of sunk in there somewhere in your deep subconscious so that the next time you wanna buy a piece of leather, you remember this video. Thank you so much guys for watching. I appreciate your support. Like, share, subscribe, turn on those notifications so that you can see more videos like this. 
Again, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare, for their involvement in this. And guys, if you've got any questions, write them in the comments and I will try and get to them as soon as I can. All right, that's enough from me. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.